What's up guys? In today's video, I'm gonna explain exactly how to buy life insurance in Canada. Now, I know myself, I've been in the insurance industry for the past seven years. It's very difficult to understand how it works and who you're buying it from and how their relationship to the carrier is. So in this video, I'm gonna explain exactly how to buy life insurance in Canada and how that system works so you can have a really good grasp as a consumer when you're trying to shop the life insurance market. So with that, Let's get started. Okay, before we get into how to buy life insurance in Canada, maybe I'll just give you a brief history of insurance around the world and in Canada, and that'll kind of give you a grasp on how it works now. It's 2022 now, whenever you're watching this video. So the very first form of insurance as we know it today was actually Mongolia traders, okay? So these Mongolia traders, like caravan traders, not traitors, would be journeying from, from you know one city to another city, and they would have to cross rivers because they had their caravans and they were merchants and they had horses and all this, this material and all of their goods and services and yada yada. And they would have to cross all these rivers as they were going from town to town. And what they found is that every once in a while, the river crossings were quite treacherous and one of these caravans would get swept away. And so the merchants, when they traveled together, they would essentially, they made this pact that said, well, why don't we distribute our goods throughout all these different caravans? So if there's 20 caravans and you had 20, I don't know, clay pots, then you would put one of those clay pots in each caravan. And then if they lost one caravan, you're only losing 1 20th of your goods. And so that way they could mitigate some of the risk and distribute it, pardon me, evenly throughout the entire group of, of caravans and merchants. And so that's essentially all life insurance is, is you're collectively putting all this risk together in a group, but you're sharing the burden. So if something does happen, well, we can have enough premiums and enough capital to be able to pay that one individual person where they, they passed away, unfortunately. That's basically life insurance and insurance in general, okay? Now, uh, life insurance in its earliest form was actually a company called Lloyd's. Lloyd's, uh, Lloyd's, uh, Lloyd's, uh, I think it was Lloyd's Marine. Hang on, let me look this up. Ah, no, I got it. Lloyd's of London. <laughs> Lloyd's of London was the first life insurance company as we know it. It was started in the 1700s and it was the first of its kind. It was essentially made for, for sailors and for a lot of people that were obviously sailing the sea and they passed away quite frequently. So they would line up in droves to get life insurance. So if they did pass away at sea, their families would have something left behind for them, okay? The earliest form in Canada is Canada Life. So Canada Life was started in 1846. I actually think it was started before Canada. Uh, so it's quite old. It was the first insurance company uh, of its kind in Canada, and it's still around to this day, actually. So Canada Life is a prominent carrier here in Canada. Okay, let's talk about the distribution of life insurance, because once you understand this, you'll really start to understand how to buy life insurance and how it really works um, from all the different agents and carriers and brokerages, and it can be very confusing. Let me explain how the distribution works, and I think you'll get a really good idea after that, okay? Insurance in the 1800s and the 1900s, uh, life insurance in Canada in the 1800s and the 1900s, it was very easy to understand. You had the carrier, which was like Canada Life or Sun Life or Equitable or any of these other insurance companies, and they would hire salespeople. And these salespeople would go out and they would work for that insurance company and they would sell that one product. So if you worked for Sun Life, you sold Sun Life products. And you went around, you said, I'm selling life insurance, this is our Sun Life product. And, and if you like it, you can have it. If you don't like it, that's all I sell. It was really easy to understand. You had a sales team that worked directly for the carrier and that was it. And, and that was basically the norm until about 1950, 1960, 1970, especially in the 80s and 90s now, things started to change quite a bit. And what happened was the carriers started to move away from this uh, sales force model. They started to distance themselves from direct salespeople that they had to uh, train, they had to license, they had to get them out selling, they had to handle all the compliance of this sales team. It's quite a bit of work. And they said, maybe our time would be best served just creating the products, doing the underwriting, factoring the risk in, pooling together different groups, looking at different risk classes and whatnot. And they thought, you know, why don't we separate ourselves from the sales force and do more of just the building of the products. Think of them as like the manufacturer, okay? 
So the carrier essentially is really easy to understand. That's the company, the insurance company that is producing the product. They're like the manufacturers. So that would be Sun Life, Equitable, Canada Life, RBC. These are the insurance companies that are underwriting. They're, they're taking on the risk. And if there's a claim, they're the ones that are gonna be paying it out, okay? Now, as we go down this chain of distribution from the carrier's point of view down, you essentially start to get all these different middlemen that essentially will help agents and independent brokers have enough volume to be able to have relationships with this carrier. So what do I mean by that, okay? Well, if I as a broker went out and I went to Equitable and I went to RBC and I went to Sun Life and went to these different companies and said, hey, I'd like to sell your products. They would say, no problem. Absolutely, Philip, go ahead. Um, what we require is a million dollars in annual premium per year to issue a contract because from our point of view, the paperwork to get all this done and to keep you on is, is quite a bit. So we wanna make sure that you're gonna be producing enough here to stay on. And I said, okay, well, if I have to do a million for you and a million for that company, a million for this company, I'm not sure that I'm gonna be able to make all those commitments, okay? And they say, well, that's fine, come back when you do. And so the invention of something known as the MGA, the Managing General Agency came around, and this has been around for the last 40 years plus, but it's been getting bigger and bigger and bigger as we move forward into this new model with the brokerage, okay? And an MGA is essentially a brokerage in itself that doesn't sell direct to consumers. They essentially work with independent insurance brokers and they pool together all of their volume and then they go out and they get contracts with all these different carriers. So they say, okay, you can have a contract with Sun Life, even though you don't really do that much volume with them, we have all these brokers together and from that we have enough volume to maintain a contract with them. So this allows you as an independent broker the ability to uh, get contracts with companies that you might not be able to get contracts with, okay? And then from there, it's really just varying degree of how many middlemen they want to cut out. So as an independent broker, as you start producing volume, you start to think, well, why do I need this company? I'm just gonna go direct to the carrier and get a contract with them because I have so much volume. And so you have the carrier, you have the MGA, and then you have brokers. And anywhere in between they could fall in that spectrum. Some brokerages get so big that they essentially become their own carrier and they become their own insurance company because they say, I wanna cut out everyone and I wanna be the manufacturer. And then they start selling direct to consumers. So with all that being said, how do you buy life insurance in Canada? There's really three ways to buy life insurance in Canada. The first way is from an insurance agent. And this insurance agent works directly with the uh, carrier. So there's a few companies that are left uh, in Canada that are still direct to consumer. And there's also a few companies that have gotten so big as a brokerage that they've become their own carrier. And so those agents are essentially selling direct to the consumers and they're selling their company's own product, if that makes sense. Um, that's the first way. Okay, so right off the bat, uh, Sun Life comes to mind. There's Sun Life agents that work directly with Sun Life and they essentially have a contract with Sun Life, they sell Sun Life. So usually when you work with these types of companies, you're only going to get that one specific product. Okay. The second option is to work with a broker of sorts. And I put that asterisk there, broker of sorts, because there's a number of different brokerages out there. Some of them have contracts with a lot of different companies. Some of them have contracts with very few different companies. Some of the, them have uh, various different types of sales training. Some of them really like whole life. Some of them really like universal life. Some of them really like term life. Some of them are holistic and they plan for the client. It's, it's all over the board, but that's the second model is through a broker who will have access to a number of different products and be able to hopefully sell you one that's suitable to your needs and you usually meet with them in person or online and write the application. The third way to buy life insurance in Canada is now through an online life insurance platform, okay? So this has really been uh, growing since the pandemic. Of course, we're doing a lot more things online and less face-to-face. -face. So in this example, you'd be purchasing uh, insurance online. You'd be doing the application process online. You wouldn't really be necessarily meeting with anyone. You might have a conversation with them on the phone, but most of that is now done online. So a couple brokerages that come to mind for this, of course, I'm biased. I have an online life insurance 
Quotes platform. I'm the CEO of Affinity Life. That's one platform right there where you can view quotes and buy them online. But of course, I'm going to list my competitors. So the other two that come to mind that are big in Canada are Policy Advisor and Policy Me. Both of those are online brokerages where you essentially can do the entire application process online. You don't have to talk to an agent. In most cases, you might have to, you might not, but they're available if you do need to talk to them. Um, and that's becoming more and more popular with people who just want to get the information and apply online and not have anyone come to their house or talk to them, have it simply done. Those are the three ways right now in Canada. I'll briefly just talk about what happens and how you apply for life insurance, and I'll clear that in this video. I'll make another video and I'll expand on this process, but I'll just put it in this video real quickly. So uh, essentially, when you apply for life insurance, you'll write an application for it. And so in that application, there'll be personal information, medical information, financial information, um, and they'll ask a lot of questions. And then once they receive that application, depending on who you go through, okay, they're going to do what's called underwriting. And underwriting means the carrier is going to look at all that information and figure out if they're going to put you in a certain uh, risk class, if they're going to rate you, if they're going to deny you, and, and, and what so on, what so forth, okay? So at that point, they may require uh, what's known as, as medical underwriting, and they may require further information. So you might have to do um, a blood profile, you might have to give urine, you might have to do a paramedical, you might have to do a few of those things. It depends on a lot of different factors, the carrier, uh, how much insurance you applied for, your age, your health, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Once the insurance company has all that information, they're going to do what's known as underwrite you. And they're gonna figure out, are we gonna do three things? And they'll give you these three options at the end, okay? Or, or they'll give you one of these three outcomes, I should say, at the end. One, they're gonna deny you flat out and they'll say, no, you do not qualify for life insurance. We regret to inform you that we decline. Two, they're gonna say, uh, we're gonna rate you. So they're gonna say, we will accept you, but we're gonna rate you 200%. So I know that we quoted you $35, but unfortunately, uh, we're, gonna, we're gonna rate you 200%, so it's gonna be $70. And, and if you'd like to do that, you, you absolutely can, um, or you could, you could uh, reject that offer, it's up to you. You're not uh, obligated to take that offer, okay? Or the third option, they're gonna approve you at standard rating or better. They're gonna say, whatever we quoted you, 35, you're gonna get that, or possibly you're even healthy healthier than, than they thought you were, and maybe you're in really good condition. They say, we quoted you 35, but actually we're gonna give it to you for 30. So those are the three different options that they'll present to you at the end, and then you'll be covered and you'll have life insurance. So yeah, with, with that, I hope I answered uh, enough of your questions for how to buy life insurance in Canada. If you have any more questions, just drop them in the comments. And if you have any ideas for any other videos you'd like me to make, also drop that in the comments. Uh, thanks so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. Sweet. Oh man. Cool, cool, cool. It's morning time and coffee is good. Coffee is really good. Mmm. Woohoo! <laughs> What's going on? Am I talking too loud in this thing? Well, it's too late now, isn't it? Bah. <laughs> well, I feel like I've been recording at this for the whole time. I'm gonna turn it down for the next one. Broker, MGA.